hey everybody, it's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Annie Bubby. It's also time for us to celebrate, celebrate starting tomorrow, June 1st, National Dairy Month. The Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin uh, sponsored Dairy Month. And it's also Friday, June 4th is National, wait for it, National Cheese Day. Who knew that there was such a thing, but there definitely is. And so here at Nanny Bubby, we are celebrating and you can win a huge cheese basket being sent to you by the Wisconsin Cheese Farmers. So this is how you win. Hey, Mom. Hey, Nancy. Nice to have you here. Everybody's finding us. I just want to repeat. You can win a huge cheese basket sent to you by the Wisconsin Cheese Farmers um, Association. It's the Dairy Farmers Association sends it on behalf of Wisconsin Cheese. It's kind of confusing, but hang in there with me. All you need to do is take a picture of a recipe that you have that has cheese in it um, or a recipe that you've typed on your computer if you, you know, have that and post it and gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group. And if you're out, if you're making anything this week with cheese, snap a shot and post it and gather with Nanny Bubby. It's easy. My sister was out eating a hamburger and she just, or a cheeseburger, and she just shot a picture of a cheeseburger and um, she posted it. And so that's all you have to do, whether you're making it at home or whether you're eating it out, take a picture of anything you're eating that has cheese on it or in it, tag it, tag hashtag Wisconsin cheese, and that enters you to win the cheese basket. And on Friday, right after I'm done with my, um, eight news now segment and we're going to be making cheese recipes two cheese recipes on friday right after that i'll come back on to nanny bubby facebook group or nanny bubby facebook page where i always do these live segments and we will draw out of the hat the name of the lucky winner here's the thing the more pictures you post the more recipes you post the more you enter to win the cheese basket. So load up. You could po post 10 pictures, 10 recipes, anything you want, and that will enter you to win 10 times. So when I have that big basket of names that I'm going to pull out, then um, you get a chance to win. So there you have it. So today we are making blackberry basil jam. And blackberry basil jam is one of the very, very, very first things that I made where I had a sense of pride about what I had made. So the very first thing that I, recipe that I actually created on my own. Hey Frank, hey Lambo, nice to have both of you here. Thanks for joining us. Everybody's finding us here. Everybody's getting ready to post pictures in. So tell me Frank, are you gonna post a picture and a recipe today in Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group and Lambo and you know, mom and Nancy, everybody's gotta get in there. Post your pictures, post your recipes, enter to win that cheese basket. So the very first recipe that I ever created on my own where there's a big store, okay, Frank, good guy, um, on my own was eggplant parmesan, which is tons of cheese, but it was the texture of the eggplant that I was working so hard to achieve. And finally, quite by accident, the story is on nannybubby.com under recipes, you'll find that story. Um, but the very first thing, which was a Giada recipe, and I cooked it exactly as she said, was this blackberry basil jam. And I loved every minute of it. It gave me so much pride. And then as time went on, I have adjusted the recipe. So I'm going to show you how to make it. And then I'm going to show you how to make a cheese board. So if you're having people over tonight for Memorial or any other time in your life, you can make this cheese board, but let me first show you how to make the blackberry basil jam. I'm making a big pot of it, but what I do is I refrigerate it, it thickens up, and then I stick it in these little two ounce jars right here, as you can see, and I freeze them. And that way when people come and I need to put out a cheese board or whatever I'm doing, um, then um, uh, I pull out the jam and it is great and I'll show you exactly how to eat it. Frank, you cannot just post on your own wall. You have to go into Gather with Nanny Bubby 
Facebook group, the Facebook group Gather with Nanny Bubby, and you have to post it in there um, because I'm the one keeping track of it all. And the rules are you got to go into Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group and post your picture. So that I love that you posted your picture on your wall, but you've got to take that same picture now and share it into the Facebook group. So are you a member of Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group, Frank? You got to give me a thumbs up on that. If you're not, go ahead and, and ask to join. Rosanna, let you in and then post that picture and then post everything else you're doing in Gather with Nanny Bubby. And that statement wasn't just for Frank. That statement was for all of you in case you were doing it wrong as well. So you could share it on your own wall, which I really appreciate that. OK. Oh, he says. Oh, I know. It's so confusing. OK. Oh, my gosh. Frank is my top fan now. Wow, Frank. Way to go. Hey, Jennifer Tuttle. So, Jennifer, you missed all the rules on how to win a huge cheese basket from the Wisconsin Cheese Farmers of Wisconsin. <laughs> cheese Farmers of Wisconsin. Um, but go back and just listen to the beginning of this. Hey, Glory. Um, yes, you can freeze it. You're going to absolutely love it. So let's get started. Are you ready? Let's turn this on. So what I have in here already is one cup of sugar. I'm going to add the other half cup of sugar. And then I'm going to add the absolute favorite thing that you could ever want, which is two ounces of Grand Marnier. So as this starts heating up, let me get a spatula. I did forget that one thing. It's 100 degrees. Let's use a snowman. Let's think about the holidays. And this is a great recipe to use for the holidays. So as this starts heating up, the Grand Marnier will um, start to dissolve. It's all in the sugar right now, as you can see right there. But let me just flip. Oh, I can smell it. Oh, mm, my God. Makes you want to drink in the afternoon. It just smells so good. We're, next thing we're going to do, which I never do unless I'm on vacation. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to juice two ounces of orange juice. I didn't, I didn't bring a knife either. I was so excited about Dairy Month and about June 4th being cheese day so those of you who love cheese make sure you post those pictures so here we go Let's, whoa there we go you see that coming out isn't that just so fun other way so typically what i'm really supposed to do is keep this up so that it doesn't come out until you spout it so look at that. Look how good that is. Look at how empty that is. So let's do the next one. Here we go. Oh, there it goes the opposite direction. Okay. What do we need here? We need about two ounces. So there we go. And up it comes. So just a little more. It's just about three ounces. So we're going to take that. And we're going to dump that right into our bowl here. You can see. There we go. And we'll heat that up with the sugar so the sugar starts dissolving. And now we need the entire lemon. So there's a lot more um, orange juice in here. So let's dump this orange juice out. We can add it later if this gets too thick. But just I love when you do that. Don't you love how that comes right out? I love this thing. Okay. There we go. Okay. And now let's do the lemon juice. So we'll use this to pour into. And let's do an entire lemon in there. Okay. Ready? Here we go again. This is up. Okay. So you got to love this machine. This is by Juice Man. There we go. The really great thing about this is that all these seeds are in the top. Look at how empty that is. It's fantastic. And one more. Okay. And we need about another two ounces of lemon juice. So let me just get that in here. Fill this up. There we go. Okay. 
So I've just poured that in. We're going to take this and we're going to dissolve it. There we go. So you can see that this is heating up. And we're going to turn it up just one little bit. So I did have the blackberries in here uh, prior because I was measuring them and weighting them because there was a question that I had about uh, the recipe that I had created some time back and it just didn't sound right to me. So I had to go back and weigh everything that I had in that recipe on a scale to make sure that it was right. So this is going to come up. And so the next thing um, in the blender, we're going to add basil and blackberries along with their juice and blend until smooth. So here is the problem I had today. I went to three stores. Listen, I went to three stores yesterday to find um, chicken Italian sweet sausage for my granddaughter and finally found it at the fourth store. And then today I went to three stores to find frozen blackberries. And I finally found one small 12 ounce bag of blackberries um, at Albertsons. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Um, and, um, but that was it. And I needed six cups of blackberries. And so, um, I am using, I did put into the blender behind me, um, one small 12 ounce bag of the blackberries, but I also put, um, a, the rest of that. So it was about three cups and I put three cups of the mixed berries into the blender as well. And I just don't think that anybody is going to hate it with a little bit of strawberries and raspberries and blackberries in there. It's strawberries, blueberries, and, and blackberries. So I think it'll be okay. So the next piece is we need four and a half cups of fresh basil. And this is where the absolute, I mean, it's a lot of basil. So there you go. You can smell it. it smells amazing. So loosely packed, we're putting in the basil. This is coming up nice, and where did I put that spatula? Right here. <laughs> okay, just want to mix that around so it doesn't um, doesn't burn. Okay, so here's these beautiful blackberry basil or these beautiful basil leaves. So there we go. There's about one cup, and let's just load it up some more. Now the nice thing about, now I really do, well, the nice thing about the basil is that you're actually going to use it as a garnish with the blackberry basil jam. And you think to yourself, it's just way too much basil, but it's really not. So there is cup number two. And let's see, you can see this. Let me tip you over. Hey, Peter Guzman, father of the bride. Yes, you can come over and eat, Peter, anytime you like. Don't threaten like that. You have to come. Okay. Here is um, here is almost three cups. Let's get some more in here. Okay. Look at all. I mean, and I want to tell you, I wish this were from my garden, but it is not because my little basil plants are just babies. And so what happens is when I cut them all last week to do all the recipes last week, this week, there's just none left to cut. Very soon, those trees will be so big that I will be begging people to take basil home when they come to visit me. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. So I actually had to go out and buy basil today, which is okay. I will tell you that Trader Joe's has the very best um, organic basil in town. So if you're ever looking for beautiful organic basil, other than coming here and asking me for some, you can get it at Trader Joe's. So that I think is about four cups. And what do we need? About four and a half. So let's do five full cups here. Let's just pull this right off. Get all of these leaves in. There we go. And let's just get the rest of this in there. Just get the, the woody stems off, but the tender stems you can definitely keep. There we go. And that's about five cups loosely packed basil which I know seems like a lot. Okay, so now, next step is we are going to take all of these frozen berries right here from this um, 
blender from the Vitamix have been sitting there. They've defrosted. There's a lot of juice that comes out of the frozen. I really, really encourage you to use the frozen because it really adds all of those juices and it's really quite good. And so now I think Megan's going to grab the, the, oh, can you, there you go. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. She's zooming in in a way I didn't expect. Okay. Let's just move it a little bit. Nope. The other way. Turn it. There we go. Okay. So we're going to put in this basil just like that. And let's hope that these have defrosted enough, right? And we're going to turn this on. Let's see here. I'm going to get the... I've got to get the plunger to plunge them down. Here it is. I'm going to throw a little more orange juice in there just to give it some liquid. Here we go. There we go. Let's plunge that in. Okay. Wow, it's not catching. There we go. Okay, how do you like that? Look at that. Thank you, Megan. Okay, so, hey, Verica, how are you? Yes, sending love to you all as well. Verica, go back to the start of this video and learn how you can win a huge cheese basket from Wisconsin Cheese, representing the dairy farmers of Wisconsin. There's a big contest going on in Gather with the Annie Bubby Facebook group, and I want all of you to have as many chances as you possibly can to win. I'll be pulling the name on Friday. So this, mm, you can smell all that basil. It's just so delicious. We're going to take this. It's just amazing. And we're just, can you guys see that? Let me turn this. There we go. Okay, look at that. It's nice and thick. We're going to put this, I think it's nice and thick because it was still a little bit frozen. So let's put this in here. We're going to start bringing it to a simmer, but we're going to add a few things along the way. Number one, the very first thing that we're going to now add is a diced Granny Smith apple. And why Granny Smith? Because there is natural pectin in a Granny Smith apple. And if you don't want to add pectin from a jar, Granny Smith will do its job. And if you ever need a little more, just add one more Granny Smith apple. So we'll let that start heating up and come to a simmer. There we go. Does that look great? Okay. And now the next thing we're going to add is the um, grated zest of an orange. We're going to put that right in. So let's get that in which adds flavor and really enhances the Grand Marnier that we put in to start this recipe. There we go. And now let's take care of that Granny Smith apple. So let me turn you around right here. Um, you want to lick the spoon. I know. I should have done that. It looked so good. It looked like a, 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 a smoothie, didn't it? It looked like a blackberry basil smoothie, right? We would add a little coconut water or a little almond milk. It would have been fantastic. Okay. So this is how I core and peel. Hi, Saeed. You never say hello back, but um, I'm hoping you're not a bot. But if you are, but if you're not a bot, you should say hello. Okay, ready? Here we go. Um, let me 
down we go. This is the best way I know how to core and peel and then dice an apple. So we pull these out one by one. We pull them out. Core is left in. We There's a paring knife right over there if you'll just, nope, nope, all the way at the end. Last one. There we go. Thank you. Okay. It's great having Megan here. At least I didn't have to leave the camera. Okay, so I'm going to take off the skins because we don't want that. What's going to happen is the Granny Smith apples themselves are going to literally dissolve. And we are going to take this and put it back into the blender if we need to uh, with the Granny Smith apples. Or honestly, if you just take a wooden spoon and just press on these, they absolutely... Um, will dissolve right into the blackberry basil. So I'm just pulling off all of this. Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do on the fly here? I'm going to put some of this liquid right back into that blender, and I'm going to take these Granny Smith apples, and instead of dicing them, I'm going to blend them so that they're nice and ground up, and so that the pectin has no trouble getting into this because we really do want this to thicken up. And I'm going to show you how it thickens up in just a minute when I open up this little two ounce jar and show you how we're going to make this fabulous cheese board. So here we go. But I think really that we should have thrown these apples right into the blackberry basil so that they could um, smooth out as well and all that pectin can cook in. We just get these diced up a little so they're easy to blend out. We don't get have to use the plunger. There we go. Can you see all that? Okay, so let's grab that blender right here. And we're going to throw in these apples just like that. I'm going to use this one cup measure and we're going to take some of that blackberry basil mixture and put it right into this blender so we can make a nice frothy pectin drink. <laughs> okay, where's the top and is the plunger still there? Yes, it is. Okay, ready? Let's zoom in. go all in okay okay that'll do it here we go and that will make this so thick there we go. I love that. That's a much better idea, and I am going to adjust that recipe. You know, sometimes, for me anyway, because I write recipes, right? This is what I do. Sometimes I write the recipe because that's how I've done it, but then maybe the third or fourth time that I write it, I say to myself, you know what? If I did this instead of that, it would make it smarter, it would make it easier, and it would actually be a better recipe. So... There you have it. I just did that on the fly and just changed that on the fly. Okay, so we are going to let this come to a simmer. So we're going to simmer this. Let me check this recipe. We're going to simmer it um, for about 45 to 50 minutes. So I'm not going to cause um, all of you to be here for 45 or 50 minutes while this comes to a thickness that we can let it cool and then drain into the two ounce um, container. So I just want to give you a pointer on that. On Amazon, you can find these little jars, but if you don't want to wait, and I don't because I need them by tomorrow because I'll put this in refrigerator overnight, check its thickness, and I'm going to want to put it into these little jars. So believe it or not, Albertsons sell these, sells these two little, uh, two ounce little mason jars, I guess you would call them. Hey, Sue, glad to have you here. Be sure to go back and check the beginning of this video so you can see how to win a huge cheese basket 
uh, by posting any cheese recipe or cheese dish in Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group. So um, um, Amazon has them, Albertsons has them, and Albertsons also has the two inch, two ounce Ziploc plastic containers. And so which, whichever one you prefer, I actually prefer the glass ones because I many times have had the plastic ones crack in the freezer. So I actually like these. So let me move a few things around here and show you exactly how to make this cheese board. So here, let me put this over here and get rid of this so I can give myself some room. Oh boy, am I making a mess today? Yes, I am. Let me get this off here. So, let me grab this. Okay. And let's move all this over. Be careful which dish dishcloth you use to wipe everything up because it does stain the dishcloth. That blackberry is definitely a stainer. So here is how I put together and assemble a cheese board. So I'm still making just a little bit of room here. Just, yeah, pull that back. So Lene is there. So Lene, such great info on the Granny Smith apples and pectin, yes. And Lene, I want to really want to thank you because Lene yesterday was the very first person. She posted two uh, pictures and a recipe, I believe, yesterday in Nanny Bubby Facebook, uh, gather with the Nanny Bubby Facebook group. And so Lene has just entered to win three different times. Um, and so that's very exciting. Thank you so much. Uh, Frank was posting on his own wall and just hashtagging. And so Lene got it done right. So Frank, if you want to see how to do it, go see um, what Lene did in the gather with the Nanny Bubby Facebook group. Okay. So let me show you exactly, I hope you can see this whole thing. So sometimes, at least for me, yeah, just move it back just a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. Whoop, turn it just, yeah, perfect. Okay, so just um, one of the things that, that I find is I absolutely love using this beautiful cheese board. It's a Michael Aram. It's marble, and it's absolutely gorgeous gorgeous, but the problem is it's very small. So I actually add it to the end of my cutting board, which gives me the beauty in the front, but gives um, some of the board itself when it comes to slicing uh, the baguette or um, you know, putting other things on it that will not fit there, otherwise it looks too crowded. So I'm gonna add a little water into this cute little vase and what I'm going to do, there we go, just a little water in here, this beautiful little, isn't that gorgeous, so cute. And I'm going to take a little bit of the basil that we have here, because the key to this blackberry basil jam is you're going to put a piece of basil, okay. Let's grab just a little bit more. Okay, so you're gonna serve this blackberry basil jam with these beautiful leaves right here on the side. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Right over here. And then you're gonna take your little jar that you froze, by the way, this unfreezes in about 15 minutes and even sooner if you just kind of run it under warm water for just a minute. And let me put, now you can see how actually very thick that is. There we go. Okay. So, here we go. Hold that for just a minute. So the, the jam is right here. We're going to take a spoon here and put that spoon. A little spoon. Okay. Hi, honey. Are you hungry? Are you wanting to turn on the news? Do you want to come say hello? It's National Cheese Day. Are you posting? Are you posting in Gather with Danny Bubby? National Cheese Day. You know how hungry I'm with National Cheese Day. It's my favorite day of the year. Better than Christmas. Better than Hanukkah. Better than any holiday. You know, matter of fact, it's such a big day today. 
I took the day off. Oh, there you go. Right. Actually, National Tuesday is Friday. I get Friday off too. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. Or you could come downstairs and so see the recipes what, we're making so on Channel what do A. We have here today? So we are making blackberry basil jam, which you love, right? I love it. You love blackberry but basil. I can't eat it though. No, not now. Okay. No. But and we're gonna show everybody how to take a bite. Easy and eat. with no carbs. Oh god. No fat, no sugar. <laughs> oh poor guy. Lives such a such a it's such a boring life. Such a know? boring life. No. Okay, shall I go on now? Uh, can I oh that's it? That's it. You're done. Okay. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right. You should come down and visit more often. Okay. All right. So I love, I'm just going to show you these. I love these tapas, tapas, tapas samplers from Trader Joe's. They look so beautiful on a, um, on a cheese tray. And here's the reason why. And I'm just going to tip you down just a tiny bit. Can you just tip it down? Perfect. Perfect. So you can take these little wedges right here and just line them up right here on the cheese board. They look so clever and they look just kind of like a little fanning them out. And there we go. There you go. Okay. Something like that. Then I always put a blue cheese on the cheese board. So let's do that. There we go. I think that looks so beautiful. Now, right here I have, these are lemon leaves right off my Meyer lemon tree, which is great to put a little bit of nuts, a little bit of almonds, as you can see. Um, just turn that just a little bit so they can, nope, the other way. Yeah, perfect. Um, so these are the almonds that you can see. These are some dried fruit. These are figs, apricots, dates are always great. They always make um, something great. Here are the, of course, the grapes. Now there's one other thing that I wanted to share with you. One of the things that I love on a cheese board is actually citrus. Now, I love to do citrus for two reasons. Number one, if you're making a cheese board and it's the middle of winter, peeling oranges like this, this is how I made it through COVID, by the way. I peeled oranges constantly. And what was great about the peeling of these oranges is that the oils from the skin of an orange is exactly where all the vitamin C is located. So you have more vitamin C in these skins than you actually do from eating this. And so literally, I rub it into my skin because your skin is an organ, the epidermis, and it absorbs things, as we all know, much better than everything else. That's why hormones and different things like that are um, given to you as an absorption, as in a cream. Um, and so, in the peeling of these oranges, which are never easy, right? And it, and if you've got the smallest little cut under your nail or anywhere else, it's peeling it is just torture. But here's what happens. In January, in the middle of winter, when I put oranges or tangerines or any other grapefruits on a cheese board, it is the first thing to go. And I think it's because human nature is that there is something about citrus in the middle of winter that your instincts take over and you know that it is healthy and that it is going to, um, and that you actually crave it. And why do you not eat them yourself? Because it takes work. It takes work. There we go. That is starting to cook up. It takes work to peel this. Let me turn this down. This is simmering. And we have all come to not want to have to put work into the food that we eat, just part of the culture that we've been living in. So for the last decade or so, you know, when you've got a fast food restaurant every 10 feet down the street, um, it's all about easy. And so I love peeling these. I love putting them. Grapefruits are a big winner um, on a cheese board. Uh, especially in the middle of winter, but these are not peeling so great. But I'm going to keep going here and just put a little bit like that, maybe put one over here, just on the, around there. 
And so you can see a lot of people do put strawberries on the cheese board, which is great, but really the great vitamin C and people are not used to seeing citrus on a cheese board. So in the winter, I always recommend that. And the next thing is, it says Wisconsin Sharp. Can you guys see that? Wisconsin Sharp, so this is definitely a Wisconsin cheese. I need to cut this and I do not have anything to cut it with. And I think that's the worst part about cheese is it's always so hard to get the containers open. So here, I'll use this. So we will take this and we will open up that cellophane. This is a beautiful cheddar, sharp cheddar. There we go. Bye, honey. Are you going to the club? Oh, okay. Be careful out there. All right. And then also, I did pull out an Italian truffle cheese, which is absolutely divine, but you can see that there's just no room on here. We're going to take the baguette. We cut off the very first corner of it. And then the key to this is to always start, just start the bread just a little bit for your guests. I always cut it on an angle like this, if you can see. Okay, there we go. And then just put the, the bread slicer right under it so people know. I also will tell you that the very most important thing that you can do is that nobody will eat your cheese unless you start it for them. So let's just cut a couple of pieces like this so that everybody knows it's okay to go into it. And then just also leave this knife just like getting ready to make the next slice and people will go ahead and do that. So there you have it. So now we're gonna give this, we're gonna let this boil itself to thickness, simmer itself to thickness. But we're gonna ask Megan if she wants to come over and try this. Okay, so we have Spanish cheese here, Wisconsin cheddar here, a blue cheese here. And this is how you eat it. Here, step into the camera so everybody can see you. This is Megan. Okay, you can see how nice and thick this is. We're gonna take some of this jam, put it right on the bread. We are gonna take one basil leaf. This is the key. You take the basil leaf and you set it right on top. So tell me what cheese do you think you want? I'll take cheddar. Cheddar, okay. That might be a little thickly cut, I'm not sure, but I think you can bite into that. So go ahead and bite into that and tell me what you think. That's delicious. Is that amazing? Yes. So once again, let's take, oh, don't you love it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take a little bit of the blackberry basil jam, which I'm gonna send home with um, Megan today. And we are going to take a piece of basil. Love this basil. And that's why you serve this on the, aside from the fact that you serve it there so that people know what is in everything, right? They can smell the basil. You put it on the bread. I'm gonna take a piece of this Spanish cheese, put it right on top of that. I can't help myself. Ready? Mmm. So good. Mm -hmm. I finished. You're finished. You want more? Later. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Just to remind you, as soon as we hang up, you're going to go find a couple of your cheese recipes. You're going to take a couple of pictures of anything you're eating that has cheese in it, even if you're eating it out. Tag, hashtag Wisconsin cheese. I think there's a couple more hashtags, but they're off today and they didn't give them to me. So as soon as I get those hashtags, I will pass them on to you in tomorrow's show. Tomorrow we're gonna to be making another recipe, which is an asparagus cheese and tomato tart. And so let me tell you about this. I am actually making that dish for channel eight on Friday. Um, 
And the reason uh, that I'm making it also tomorrow is that I test all of my recipes before I use them on channel eight. I want to see how long it takes, see what, what steps I have to kind of pre-do and get cut out. And so tomorrow I'm actually going um, to be um, testing that recipe so you can all test it with me. I think it's going to turn out really great. So, hey, Hannah, so nice to see you. I miss you. Thank you so much for being here. Debbie Hall is here and everybody has joined. So all of you, if you want to win a cheese basket, enter to win on Friday. Make sure that you post either a recipe or picture and gather with Nanny Bubby and tag Wisconsin cheese and you can do it as many times as you want. There's no limit. You can enter the contest 50 times as long as you uh, post 50 pictures and 50 recipes and um, we'll see who the lucky winner is on Friday. So thank you everybody. Remember go out and one, two, three, spread love like butter. Thank you everybody.